All right, so now since we have our piecewise function that is modeling the current income tax brackets in the United States of Algebra, it's time to go and put together a graph. So what we're going to do is opening up any browser. We're going to go ahead to desmos.com. And we're going to go ahead and click on Start Graphing to use their graphing tool. So there's a special way that we have to go and type in a piecewise function uh, into Desmos. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty simple. So instead of writing a single function with three pieces, we're actually going to express all three pieces. But we're just going to put a domain restriction on it. This is going to be a whole lot easier to do if you're using a laptop or a desktop and not a, uh, a tablet or a smartphone or something that doesn't have a keyboard. So if we're going and we're looking at the piecewise function that we developed for the income tax brackets, if we want to start typing, we're going to take a look at our first function, which was 0.5x. So I'm going to go over to function number one and hit 0.05x. And as soon as I put that in there, it's going to go ahead and start graphing the line. But I don't want to graph the whole line. I only want to graph it where x is in between 0 and 10,000. So to do that, you can either go and click Show Keyboard, and taking a look over at the ABC portion, you can use the squiggly brackets that are right here, or if you have a keyboard, you can just go ahead and type them. But we're just going to put that inequality in exactly the way that we have it down in our function. So we've got our squiggly brackets. I'm now going to go click back to the um, regular uh, keypad so that I can see my inequalities. And I'm going to type in 0, um, which x is greater than or equal to, while also being less than or equal to 10,000. So you can see on the graph that it's actually cut off all of the negative portions, which I wouldn't want on the graph because you can't really make a negative income. To graph the next piece, I'm going to go into function 2, and I'm going to go ahead and type in exactly what I had uh, written down for that second piece of the function before, which was 500, which of course represents the 5% tax for your first $10,000 worth of income, plus... 10%, so 0.1 times x minus 10,000. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, well, how do I know it even graphed a line? I can't see anything. Well, we'll address that issue here in just a second. But first, I want to go ahead and put the equations in. So I have this equation in, but now I need to put in the domain restriction. So I'm going to go and use my nice little squiggly brackets and following what I have written down on my paper, that's going from a low end of $10,001 to a being less than or equal to $50,000. Okay, so that's my second piece. My third piece, uh, again, I'm going to just copy down exactly what I have written down uh, for my piecewise function. So that's going to be 500 plus 4,000, which of course represents 10% of that middle $40,000 income, plus now 15%, so 0.15 times x minus 50,000. And again, just to reiterate, this x minus 50,000 is going to tell us exactly how much money I've made above $50,000 that should be taxed at a 15% rate. So, but I'm only going to be doing this for x values that are greater than or equal to $50,001. If you wanted to express this as just being greater than um, $50,000, you could do that as well. But as we mentioned previously, uh, when calculating these tax rates, the government is always going to go and round up to the nearest whole dollar. Um, so we'll just... To, to be consistent, we'll just make it where it's greater than or equal to $50,001. So I've got everything typed in, but I can't exactly see it. So if I take my mouse and just click over on the graph, 
Uh, I may need to go and grab the functions over here and just kind of pull them to make them a little bit longer to get everything to fit. If you need to do that, that's okay. So let's just link that out just a little bit. But we also notice that what we're trying to look for in the graph is pretty much all in this first quadrant. So I don't really need a whole lot of negative, negative, negative. But at the same point, this is only making $2 of income, $4 of income, $6 of income. And I've got to go all the way up to well over 50000 So in order for me to change the scale that I'm looking at, I'm going to need to go up here and click the wrench, which is going to be my graph settings. In the graph settings, what I'm going to do is take a look at the x-axis and the y-axis, and I'm going to change what those values are, and I can also go and add a label. So I can make the x-axis labeled as income, and it'll go down and label it as income down there, and I'm going to label the y-axis as tax owed. Now, like I said before, I don't really need any negative numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace the minimum of x with 0 and do the same thing for the minimum of y. So now my graph is exclusively being focused within that first quadrant. But I need to go all the way over to a much larger number than, you know, 18 and much higher than 11. So I'm going to start by changing my x-axis, and I'm going to take that up to 100,000. That'll give me a pretty clear view of all three of these functions. So if we change it to 100,000, we can see now that our, our first line is going pretty much straight up, but it's because we haven't adjusted the y-axis yet. Okay. If we're going and we're paying taxes and all this stuff, well, we probably need to know how much in taxes we're paying. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, since my x-axis is going up to 100000 if I had to pay 15% tax on $100,000, I'd be paying $15,000. So I doubt my overall tax bill would be more than $15,000. So let's make this 15000 and you can see as I keep adding zeros, my function seems to appear much more clearly. Okay. Now, some other things that you could do if you want, if you want to put it on projector mode, that'll kind of clean up the lines a little bit. Um, if you want to go and reverse the contrast and make it have you know darker colors, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it for printing, though. Um, but once we're done with our kind of adjustments here, we can just click that again. And it's very easy to see along my graph here, where if you make this much money, you should be paying this much in taxes. So you can actually click on any part of the line and sort of drag it, and it'll tell you for that piece of the function exactly how much in tax you'll owe at that particular income level. So when you start answering some questions that are going to appear later in this, like how much do I owe if it's $7,000, you can click and just drag until $7,000, and you'll see that it's sitting right there at $7,500 in tax. You can also see that there's no discontinuity between any of these three pieces because they're all lining up with each other. If you do your graph and forget to do the X minus 50,000 part, you're going to notice that there's this huge gap. So you need to make sure that you're only taxing each income level at the appropriate amount. Okay. Now, if it's me going and doing this and I'm getting ready to print it out, I may actually go back into my graph settings and change the minimum X to be, you know, maybe negative 100 and the minimum y to be maybe negative 100 in hopes that you know I get just a little bit of kind of clear space at the bottom you know I could even go and do something like this and make it you know negative a thousand so you can kind of read the lines where they are a little bit more but that's just a personal preference but what I'm going to do in order to be able to print this out is if you've got the snippet tool you could go and do that or you could go and you could click the share graph button it gives you several options to do that. So you can print it, you can export it as an image, or you can embed it into a URL code. 
Obviously, since I'm going to want a paper copy, um, I'm going to want you to hit either print or export image. Uh, if you go to export image, you have an option of how you want it to look, medium square, large square, um, large rectangle. So just kind of look at your graph and see what's going to fit the best. Um, I'm going to go with large square because I feel like it gives me some information. I'm going to make the line thickness be either medium or thick so it'll actually show up. And then I'm just going to download the image. Uh, and then I could go and from my computer print it that way. Another thing that you could go and do is if you hit export, you can hit print. And it should be the case if you have your um, function window extended enough to the side that when you print it, you'll also be including these functions, which I do need to see these functions. Uh, so even if you end up exporting the image, please make sure that you also somehow include a screenshot or a share of uh, the functions that you actually use to type in. So uh, hopefully this video has been helpful for uh, helping you to understand how to use the online uh, Desmos calculator to graph a piecewise function. It can also be used to evaluate a piecewise function at any given input value. And that you can apply what you've learned uh, by watching this to your own project, which, don't forget, is due after the break.